so little bit about the anatomy of the ganglion in par basically there are two sympathetic ganglion a pair of sympathetic a chain of uh, sympathetic ganglion each side of the uh, vertebral column and as you go down from top to bottom they come to a single point in front of sacro coccygeal junction and that is called ganglion impar impar means single it is the in fact it is the only unpaired autonomic ganglion in the body and it marks the end of the two sympathetic chains it is uh, as you know located in the retroperitoneal space just anterior to the sacro coccygeal joint and in some patients in large number of patient is uh, present anterior to the first and second sacro vertebrae so the location is anterior to the sacro coccygeal junction in front of first and second coccygeal vertebrae and what is the importance of this ganglion basically this uh, ganglion it receives afferent pain fibers from the perineum rectum anus distal part of the urethra vulva and distal part of the vagina so if there is a problem in any of these anatomical structures if it is a chronic problem which is not responding to the normal uh, treatment pharmacological treatment then you may consider these patients for this sort of ganglion impar blockade uh the first time the ganglion impar blockade was described by plaquet in 1919 he took 16 patients from all these patients they were suffering from cervical colon endometrial rectal or bladder cancers and they had no response to pharmacotherapy and uh, it was a neurologic ganglion impar block in around 50% of the patient he had 100% pain relief and next 60 to 90% of the patient they have uh, next eight patient they had 60 to 90% of the pain relief so now coming to the indication of uh, ganglion impar block basically is a chronic pain which is arising from the genital anal visceral or perineal region as i said the uh, afferent which is coming from the perineum distal rectus anus urethra vagina vulva coccyx and scrotum so if there is a chronic intractable sympathetic discomfort in this region uh you can try ganglion impar block there's a whole list of gamut of uh, this thing indications perineal pain proctitis vulvodynia scrotal pain vaginal pain complex regional pain syndrome endometriosis most commonly what we use it uh, for post traumatic oxidogynia or field back syndrome it can also be used in proctalgia fugues that is the involuntary spasm of the rectal muscles radiation proctitis post herpetic neuralgias etc contraindications are uh, there are no absolute contraindication basically it is a local skin or subcutaneous infection sacral abscess spondylodiscitis or uh, bleeding disorders uh the three types of techniques which have been described one is the lateral position second is the lithotomy position but most commonly nowadays what we use is the prone position uh we can use commonly what we use in our studies is the fluoroscopy but it can also be done under ct and ultrasound guided uh this thing techniques so these are example of the ct guided uh, you know ganglion block and uh, this is the ultrasound guided basically this is the cornua so sacral hiatus at the end of sacral hiatus if there is a prominence there and where the injection is given the disadvantage is that you have to confirm the needle placement again by the cm so commonly what we use is the cm guided uh, ganglion impar block But there are very types of approaches which has been described the original approach was trans ano coccygeal that is what uh, the placard used uh, he went between the anus and the, the and the terminal part of the coccyx there is a ligament and he used a bent needle uh, this was a bent needle technique which was later on uh, was uh, you know modified by neba and he used a curved needle the problem of, uh, of this technique was that you have to keep one of your finger inside the rectum to see whether the needle is perforating the rectum or not and it was done in the lateral position it was quite un uncomfortable for the patient and the, there were some chances of uh, this needle getting uh, broken and uh, uh, perforation of the rectum so all these approaches were further modified and uh, nowadays uh, most commonly it are the trans sacro coccygeal trans coccygeal or paramedian approaches which are being used so this was the original trans ano sacro coccygeal uh, approach in which the curved needle was used uh, uh, through the this uh, ano coccygeal ligament uh, it had a problem of the you know they had technical problems there were anal perforation injured injury to the vessels and failure rate was quite high so all these approaches were later on modified and uh, uh, this trans coccygeal approaches were used and they were simple they were direct approaches 
they used to have the small needle and there's some amount of medication is required in these um, approaches there's no needle breakage and there are minimal complication in these approaches the uh, disc uh, between the cyclococcyx and the c1 c2 and c3 that and you cannot uh, go through transcoccyx and then you have to modify the approach and that approaches the paracoccygeal approaches in which you uh, use a needle which is bent and then you slide around the uh, this thing uh, whatever bone and uh, inject the then you tilt it uh, slightly medially and then you inject your uh, uh, all the injectable material there the technique is very simple you have to place a pillow beneath the pelvis to make the coccyx more uh, you know acceptable uh, you use a, you can use uh, two types of technique one is the needle within the needle technique or uh, 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 second technique is the direct needle technique uh, you may inject opivacaine and bupivacaine followed by uh, contrast dye and uh, in coccidiodynia you can initially, initially try canacot or dipomedrol but if you are doing ablation of the ganglion then you can use phenol or absolute alcohol and some people they use a radio frequency ablation probe also for chronic discomfort so this is the basic thing first you take 18 gauge needle and through that 18 gauge needle you can use a second needle once the needle has the, the tip has just appeared on the lateral view in the in the sea arm you stop at that time and then you inject the dye around 1 ml or contrast medium and you will see the sort of the reverse which is called so called reverse coma sign indicating the localization of the ganglion and once you uh, localize that ganglion then you inject the either canacot uh, or, or 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 you wait for some time and then inject the absolute alcohol around 1 to 2 ml so there's a video there a small video of 1 minute duration so basically this is the positioning of the patient you pay, uh, you place a below beneath the pelvis and uh, localize the area infiltrate the area uh, uh, this thing periostem with the uh, 2% xylocaine put your needle there orient the needle along the along the sacrococcygeal junction in the disc region and pass your needle through the disc space once you are in front of this uh, just 1 to 2 mm in front of the disc you check it uh, check the position in the both ap and the lateral view once you check the position then you take uh, 1 ml dye and inject the dye very carefully don't go too far and you can see the ganglion there once you've seen the ganglion then you can inject whatever you want to inject you can inject some uh, uh, xylocaine or uh, this thing uh, rupivacaine and along with the canacot or the dipomedrol uh, for long term relief you can uh, uh, you can do the chemo ablation uh, either with the alcohol or the phenol or you can use the radio frequency ablation probe or cry ablation uh, of this ganglion for diagnostic and prognostic block you use uh, around 1 to 3 ml of the local anesthetic or for neurolysis of ganglion nepar 1 to 10 ml of the neurolytic agent such as 99% alcohol injected usually around 20 30 minutes after the diagnostic block the uh, so for the, uh, this procedure is with the minimal complications but sometimes you can um, you have got the some branches of the internal iliac artery which are in this region you can puncture one of those artery you can have some bleeding there uh, one of the very important complication especially which has been de described with the chemo chemo ablation agent says the migration of the migration of the either the phenol or the or the alcohol spirally you see basically whenever you injecting something here in this region uh, there is very little space for this chemicals to go down so if you have injected very high volume then it can go higher up higher up higher up and you know there is a hypogastric plexus of the parasympathetic plexus and it can interfere with the function of the parasympathetic plexus and then it can cause the uh, cause the sexual bladder or bowel dysfunction so as a precaution you should use the minimum amount of uh, the material around 1 to 2 ml and uh, once you have injected the material then ask the patient to lie still for 2 hours so as to prevent the spread of the this uh, uh, these agents uh, chemoblatic agents higher up uh, if you are not uh, careful you can uh, cause the bladder and bowel perforation there are very minimum chances of discitis or local infection or abscess formation thank you very much mm -hmm.